the month of February at Daytona Beach, Florida, was storm-tossed and wind-whipped. Three miles inland at the Daytona International Speedway, everything ground to a halt. A heavy mist still filled the air as crews and drivers waited, nervous, frustrated, needing track time to shake down their cars, getting none. In two weeks of rain and fog, the only event was the windswept first day of qualifications in which Richard Petty set a new track record of 176.165 miles per hour, putting his specially prepared 1966 Plymouth on the pole for race day. With that kind of speed, his competition was definitely outside. Two days before the race, the last chance to qualify, and finally the sun shines. Plymouth driver Jim Herdebees is relaxed and confident. Bobby Isaac will drive Junior Johnson's Ford, Hutcherson Ford, Goldsmith Plymouth. Ford driver Fred Lorenzen likes that bright, sunny weather. Cale Yarborough is in a Ford too. Veterans Larry Frank in a Plymouth and Daryl Derringer in a Mercury. USAC's Rookie of the Year, Mario Andretti. Earl Balmer will be driving a Dodge. Jim Pascal, a Plymouth. Two 100-mile races to determine how the 50-car field will line up for race day. Everybody cuts loose. But some overdo it. specially prepared Plymouths. In the first 100-miler, Petty and Goldsmith run long and strong right down to the wire. Goldsmith makes a last-second dash and takes it by four feet, earning himself a second-row starting position for race day. The second 100-miler, Bomber and Herdebees race for the checker. Bomber hangs on to win it, clinching the starting spot next to Goldsmith for the 500. With Plymouth and Dodge on top, this really puts the squeeze on the competition. 36 hours to the big race. No more practice time. One solution, pull the engine. Find more horses. Petty's famous father and son team never even lift the hood. Jim Herdebees looks ahead, planning race strategy. Paul Goldsmith now knows he can stay with Petty. For the rest of the field, it's catch him if you can. The garages are jammed. It'll be an all-day, all-night battle for most of the crews, just to get the engines out, reworked or replaced, and back in, in time for the race. New equipment rolls in with the first light of day. Crews are still working, assembling, fighting the clock. And this is painstaking work. It shouldn't be rushed if you can help it. Drop it in. Retune it. Work to the last moment. And then, ready or not, it's race day, and another squall is moving in. Richard Petty checks the weather. It's going to be hairy out there. His crew is confident, though. And so the ritual of race morning begins. Everybody starts with an equal load of fuel, 22 gallons. Every step is carefully checked by NASCAR, the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing. The grid is marked for starting positions. Whole garage loads of equipment and supplies go into the pits. Everything that could possibly be needed to handle half a dozen pit stops during a 500-mile race. Gas 
and tires are the most important, as cars burn them up in less than 100 miles. Everything is set with Petty on the pole. The Plymouth Pace Car Parade is cut short as the weather closes in. The word goes out, clear the track. Start the race as soon as possible. Crews wipe off the windshields. There already has been one light sprinkle. The race will be official after 250 miles, the halfway point. Today's strategy is to get out in front and stay there if you can. Over 90,000 people, the largest crowd in the history of the Daytona International Speedway, are on their feet for the big one. And here come the cars. Now we'll see if the Plymouths can keep up their record-breaking speeds in traffic. Petty checks a stopwatch. Richard and Paul Goldsmith are pulling away from the field on the first lap. Speed over 176 miles per hour. are on Petty and Goldsmith as they set up their own private race. And here comes Goldsmith challenging Petty. He slips into the lead. Watch as these two Plymouths lap the field as if the rest of the cars are standing still. isn't going to let Goldsmith have all the glory. He swings high, plants his foot down, and takes back the lead. The pace is too fast for the field. Now it's Goldsmith in the lead, but no pity. What happened? Just to be on the safe side with these fantastic speeds, Petty makes a quick precautionary pit stop. His safety check drops him to 20th place. But Petty knows you have to finish to win. Hutcherson's out with a split windshield. Boyd's out with a blown head gasket. 100 miles. And Panch, in the lead, pits. The lead changes 14 times in the first half of the race, and always on a pit stop. The pace, still an incredible 170.535. And then 200 miles after Petty gave up the lead, he's out in front again and moving away. From now on, the race is official, and the pace is getting hotter. Petty's trying to put a full lap between himself and the competition. Watch out! <laughs> Hurtabies almost loses it right in front of Petty, Goldsmith, and Yarborough. His tremendous driving skill saves the day. Others are not so lucky, or so skillful. Those 171 plus laps take their toll. Bobby Isaac loses it.
Yarborough's Ford is the only Ford that seems to have a chance as Patch's windshield splits from the strain of the fastest laps ever run at Daytona, led by Richard Petty. The closing battle is Petty versus Yarborough. Yarborough still running a lap behind Petty, pits. Only 14 laps to the checkered flag. He knows Petty will have to pit too soon. His only chance is to make a faster pit stop. The Petty crew clocks Yarborough. 20 seconds. Pretty good. And here comes Petty right behind him. crew puts a watch on him. A lap two and a half miles long takes only 50 seconds. You've got to hustle in those pits to keep a lead. Petty's stop is 17 seconds. But with slow down time in and out, here comes Yarbrough. He passes Petty to go into the same lap. This is last chance gulch for Yarborough. If he can get around fast while Petty is getting up to speed, he may be able to put the pressure on him. Yarborough runs flat out. Only 13 laps left. Richard Petty is pouring it on. Lee Petty watches as his son closes the gap. Yarbrough. He plants his foot on the accelerator for one of his incredible backstretch charges. Petty charges 185 miles an hour down the backstreet. With only 11 laps to go, he closes the door on Yarbrough, takes back his full lap lead, and sets a new record for the fastest competition lap ever run anywhere, anytime. 176.817 miles per hour. Faster even than he qualified on an empty track. He did it just in time, because here comes the rain. The cars send up spray as the pace slows under the caution light. No more records today. They're calling the race. The checker and Richard Petty roars through with a lap to spare. A hundred ninety-eight laps. 495 miles. Petty's 1966 Plymouth takes it all. Hale Yarborough is one lap back. Dave Pearson and Fred Lorenzen, two laps back. The Petty's, father and son, engineered the fastest Daytona ever run. The overall speed was 160.627 miles per hour, the fastest distance race ever run on any speedway. In two successive starts, in a Hemi-powered, specially prepared Plymouth, Richard Petty is the only man to win the Daytona 500 twice.